Yeah, so we'll go over all that stuff today, but I'm glad that that was feeling better. And honestly, I mean, they've learned through repetition. So just the fact that, you know, now three weeks in a row, I've sort of kind of helped him work through that stuff. He, he, I felt like he was easier this third time. He was a lot easier than he was um, even just the week before. So, but his walk looks nice, good energy. Uh, he was quite light off the leg also on Monday. Like he was, he was just very responsive all the way around. Um, even there where you feel him start to reach, just think that you're influencing even that, yeah, a little bit out to the end of the rain so he doesn't start bearing down okay. against your hand a little bit. It's one thing for him, you know, you want him to, to kind of stretch and reach, but you don't want to feel like as he does that, that his hind end gets farther out behind. Like he just lengthens through his whole frame. That's not, you know, front and back, his whole body. You don't want that. You want to feel like when he starts to reach, you push the hind legs up underneath so that he doesn't start to get really flat because that's when he'll start to hang on you a little bit and you're going to lose some of that forward energy that you've been working on. Okay. And he'll just get harder to, you know, to turn like what you're saying, even if you're thinking leg yield and he gets a little flat and sprawled out beforehand, then he's going to start to fall out or not move well off your inside leg. So just trying to keep him kind of organized back end underneath. This is much better here. Good. Good. Why don't you walk the other way for a moment? And I also, I thought, I, I just thought a lot about his, his outside shoulder because you worked for quite a while on the bend because remember when you didn't have left bend, you couldn't move him off your left leg. Like, I mean, in the very beginning, um, when we started working together, that was, that was a problem there. He was bending well, he was moving well off your inside leg to the point where you actually needed to kind of keep checking in and make sure his outside shoulder wasn't sliding out. So would I do half halt then? A little half halt, almost, the feel of that half halt on the outside would almost be a little bit towards your inside thigh. So outside half halt to a little bit to inside thigh. It's not the hand crossing over, it's just a little bit of this sideways feel instead of straight back. That just sort of brings the shoulder a little bit with back within. Okay. There we go. And you know the feeling of the way you needed to use the outside half halt when you were practicing last time, um, the turns on the forehand. And we did them, you know, we stopped and we did them and sometimes you had to almost half halt before you moved him over. Um, and then we did it kind of moving, catch the shoulder, turn, turn, but keep walking along the outside. Because if you didn't have your outside leg, you know, he would try to stop or, or he would just pivot out. So you had to think half haul, move him off the inside leg, but have the outside there to guard. That's a little bit what you're doing just on your circle here is kind of checking that, that outside shoulder and saying, don't, don't fall out more with this shoulder as I move you off my inside leg now. And then your outside leg just kind of guards and helps him walk forward along the outside of the turn. Okay. And that's what you're doing off your turn onto your straight line before you do your leg yield. You're checking that outside shoulder. And you have to ride that pretty consistently now, whereas for a long time you didn't have to because he was never falling out. He was always falling in. Remember when it was inside leg, inside leg. Ins but now you've mastered that. There you go. And then when you're ready, we'll start warming up the trot. He looks like he might have some energy tonight. He does. He looks a little fresh. I wonder why. There you go. And just open your chest a little bit. Stretch up through your sternum and your tummy. There you go. That's right. Now you can think, a, yeah, there you go. I was going to say a little flexion to the inside, but you did it and it's plenty. And then hands a little together and you're going to slow your body but gently surround with like your lower calf and your ankle so that you, yeah, so you support the hind end forward in the big step even as you wait with your body like that. Yeah, that's all right. There you go. Good. And just sink your heels down a tiny bit more at the bottom of your leg. Like your leg's pretty long and your knees are staying down. But just, there you go. So you just drop down that little bit more. and then flex him a little bit to the inside and press him out off your inside leg here. 
but when he goes over, you're just going to catch him a little bit on the outside and, and not let him go all the way out to the wall. There. Good. There you go. Open your chest. And slow your body down again. Let him slow down a little bit. There you go. There you go. And when you do support, you don't want to you don't want to wrap your leg around in a way that sends him back to the quicker tempo. You want to support this slower tempo. There you go. Good. Then push his hind legs through a little bit, but slow your body as you do. Feel how he just wanted to go fast off that? Yeah. So you just slow him down again. What you're really thinking is not that all of his feet start going faster. You're thinking that his hind legs push more. They take a bigger step. His front legs just kind of do what they're doing and it's the hind legs you're really, there you go, you're trying to push towards the bit. There you go. And then hands that little bit together. That way he doesn't just start to over curl a little bit in his neck. There you go. Good. Then we're going to go change direction. Every time you feel him start to go a little deep, just think, I mean, Tom says it, you know, like you face your palms together. I kind of say just bring your knuckles together. But it's just this idea that instead of your hands getting wider and maybe starting to go um, like palm down, you make sure your palms face and you keep those hands a little together, especially those moments when you feel him start to kind of duck down a little extra. He sure does. I don't, I don't usually see him with energy like this. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Now this way he needs a little bit more of the turning off your outside aids, like bringing his front end a little bit inside of his hind end. There. There you go. And you did. Right there where I said it, you did. And then you've tried to go back out again. You feel that? So you just use a little bit that inside half haul almost towards your, or your outside half haul almost towards your inside thigh a little bit. Keep your body slow, really set the rhythm. There you go, there you go. Good, and then try to stay there. Try not to run him back. I know he wants to go fast right now, but try not to ride him back up to that place where he's a little running. And then turn his front end in a little bit so it's almost, um, set a little more in front of his inside hind instead of being on two tracks like that. There you go. And that'll be a constant little reminder. Just when you bring his front end around a little bit and think like almost shoulder four, um, you're not going to set him there and then he's just automatically going to stay. You're going to have to keep kind of managing that a little bit. There you go. Push your left knee down, drop your heel a little bit. Your right leg was down pretty well. Your left yeah. is getting better, but you feel how it doesn't want yeah, to stay down. Stay down. Here you go. Now we're going to do a little bit. What? Oh, you're going to go through? Go for it. <laughs> there you go. A little flexion left as you turn him in again off your outside leg. There you go. And then slow that tempo down again. Go. Flexion left. Now feel how he wants to be a little nose out instead of looking around the turn. So for the moment, you'll have to exaggerate it a little bit. Keep your inside hand a little bit open and keep turning him off your outside leg into that. There you go. And then think to put his neck a little lower. There you go. I think you were already going to go for that, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, good timing. There you go. Good, and that's a good place for his neck. So the idea is just to try to be able to steady it out there and not have him try to start to go the opposite place of being high. You know, try not to get him so he goes a lot lower than that or curls deeper. There you go. Good job, there you go. We're gonna go to the mountain block. Okay, all right. 
<laughs> Thank you. That's better. Now he's starting to settle a little bit, huh? He's all fired up. There you go. Keep turning him off the outside leg a little bit with little feels of the fingers on the outside to catch that outside shoulder so it doesn't keep sort of drifting. You want to make sure both front feet are always facing around the turn there. So next time around, go ahead and trot um, a straight line down your quarter line. Go. Just, yeah, there you go. Just keep reminding him his neck doesn't have to go higher. And circle once down there and then come straight down your next quarter line. He is easier to ride straight, huh? Yeah. He's different. Uh, good job. Good. And then why don't we change direction? We'll just do that the other way before we start the lateral work. <clears throat> good. Where he tries to get quick, you know, just slightly even, I want you to really try to keep your body in the tempo that you want and then support that a little bit with your leg. Good. You can circle once. Good. And you have plenty of bend there. So just kind of keep little feels of your fingers on the outside rein to balance that out a little, especially through this turn as you come onto the straight. So you can transition him a little straighter and then left, a little left half halts and left leg helps support. That's okay, yeah, he, he didn't, yeah, it's okay, you transitioned and sometimes, you know, if he's in that place where he's a little stuck in the overbend, you have to transition out. If you just suddenly make him straight, you're going to lose a lot of other things. So you just, you transition as best you can to the straight and then you keep repeating it until it gets easier. Now push his belly over with your left leg a little bit. Push, yeah, there you go. So you push it back into alignment. Then keep him a little less bent on the turns to set. That's okay. There you go. Take his nose a little left. Push his belly over off your left leg. So don't bend as much. Circle once and don't bend as much on your circle. Have a little, there you go, a little bit left. There you go. That's, that's actually plenty of bend in this direction. And then get little half halts on the outside rein as you start to come onto your straight line. And your left leg pushes his barrel over under his body. That's straighter. He wants the leg yield now. <laughs> Change direction. We'll start the leg yields the other way. There you go. You're sitting nicely. You're nice and straight. You're not leaning back that little bit. Yeah. You can circle once. Good. Now you can add a little bit uh, more push from the hind end here, too, now that he's getting a little quieter. Because before he was always just trying to go quickly off from it, but you can get more actual push now. It's okay if you you know if you're ever in a position where you don't have space, you can just wait. It's totally fine. I think you can go ag again here. <clears throat> yep, that'll help. <laughs> there you go. Okay, just steady him a little bit in the contact with your hands by just steadying them, and push your left knee down. <clears throat> Keep your left leg long as you start to move over. Yeah, good catch there where he just tried to run over to the wall. Give yourself a little bit extra space wherever you can so that if, if he starts running sideways, you can balance it out like you did and then get some more really good steps. Oh, that's a little more measured. Good. Push your left heel down. If he's hard to move over, gently turn your toe away. That was better. You know what I mean, though? Instead of coming a little up in your heel and feeling stronger, 
reach longer into your leg and just gently turn your toe away so that your heel comes a little closer to him. And over, soften your outside rein a little bit. There you go. That was better. So you keep that outside rein just a little bit elastic and you can half haul with your fingers as often as you need, but just feel like it doesn't hold him because otherwise it actually blocks him from moving over. Very good, good job. One more this way. Ride the shoulder around the turn, line it up, feel like your, his shoulders within your control as you start to step across. Over. <laughs> That's okay. But you, you lined up that shoulder so it never slid. He was just then like, do I actually have to cross my inside hind? There, that's good on the straightaway. Let's go the other side, the other way. Good job lining him up there. Much more between the aids. Good boy. It's all right. Good. And then let his nose out a little bit. There you go. You keep your hands just floated that little bit towards his ears. Good boy. And then stretch your tummy up. Close your ankles a little. Keep the hind legs coming. Over. A little squeak. Okay. Give yourself a little more room if you can. And then you just feel an inside leg, a little outside half paw, inside leg, a little outside half paw. <laughs> That's okay. Maybe start, start with the half paw first. See, I ruined him already. You haven't ruined him. A little bit of flexion in the corner, but keep feeling the outside half fall and a little bit of the outside leg, keeping the belly a little up under him, even as you step him across. There you go. So he does there. So he doesn't just throw his stomach to the wall. Instead, he crosses his inside hind. Oh, there. That's some good steps at the end. There you go. Good, Dana. Let his nose out just a little bit. So you do all of that work without feeling like you have to hold him back. Left half halt, little left leg. Good, good catch. There you go. Good, circle here. Let's do a walk transition. I think we should let him breathe for a minute. Just think you keep letting the nose out as you. There you go, and he moved off your inside leg well. <laughs> Almost to where you had to ride the outside a little more forward there, but that, that was good. That was obedient. Let him, let him breathe. So, I mean, so the trot work is really coming along, though. Yeah. It's greatly improved. Come on. Is that bad that he does that? Should I not let him itch? So, I let my horses do it, but I don't let them interrupt the work to do it. <laughs> Some people don't like to let them do it at all. I'm okay with it, with my horses personally, but I don't let them just say like, oh, I'm stopping here to do it. Like if I'm stopped and they offer, I'm, I'm okay with that, but. The leg heels are better. They're definitely better. And I know you're feeling like you're gonna mess something up, but you're not because when you when you figure it out a little bit and you clean it up, it's gonna be it's gonna be just fine. It's all gonna be what it should be. Um, I ride my horse as well as I can. Do I ride him as well as he could be ridden? No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and that's, no, I don't, because I can go ride with some 
really good instructor or clinician or I could put Tom on or whatever and he's gonna go better for that person than he does for me, but that's not the point. You know, I have to learn somewhere. Right. So the same with you. So he knows what to do, but he's you know, like any horse, he's fairly particular. So But you're doing well. No, you're doing a really good job. And you, you're riding the outside shoulder, and you're getting the inside hind to come around. Sometimes he might lose his balance a little in or out, but you fix it. You know, you're, you're noticing those things. You're aware now. And I like that when you wanted to ride the straight lines, um, they were quite good. Tracking left is a little bit easier. Tracking right, he kind of wants to fall out the left a little bit. Um, so just being aware of that means then you can, you can pay a little extra attention to that. Um, on the straight and on the in the leg yields, so. So I've also been doing some shoulder in work with him. Have you done any shoulder in? No. Okay. That um, was. It's a little bit. I think it's a little bit harder. Just slightly. Yeah. Um, so I'll explain what it is, um, and maybe the walk is the better place to do it for now. But so, hi, if you're coming around tracking right, and you're coming down, say like the long side, the straightaway here, the idea is that you're going to put him on three tracks. So his outside front is in front of his inside hind like this. So instead of being here, you just set him over one track, okay. right? So the idea is that he's, his, he's still traveling a straight line. He's not moving sideways. He's not supposed to change the actual line of travel that he's on, okay. but he's positioned this way as he's going straight yep. down. So that's gonna be, I mean, your outside rein helps bring the shoulders around. Your inside leg is there to tell him, don't keep turning in, stay on this track. It's a lot between your outside rein and your inside leg. There is a little bit, you know, if he tries to slow down um, or he tries to start leg yielding over, your outside leg is gonna be there to help got, kind of guard and guide that side forward. Um, and you have to have an inside rein to keep him positioned to the right. He needs to be bending still a little bit. Um, so it's another thing to play with. You come around, you set him up almost like the first step of leg yield, except you try to ride the straight line instead of continuing to move sideways. So we do it a lot of the time on the wall so they can't keep leg yielding and moving sideways. Um, but um, sometimes the wall is, you know, sometimes the wall is actually your guard there. Um, and if you do it off the wall. I like to do mine off the wall sometimes because then I can really tell the horses between my aids. But for starting, we'll start on the rail. So we could walk him. You might have an easier time to the left first. Maybe, and everyone else is going left. So maybe we'll go left. You know, push your left leg down a little bit, your left knee down, try to keep a little bit the length there. Even sometimes you can scoot your hips a little to the left and sit more in that seat bone because I think you just get a little bit off to the outside in this direction. I do. Yeah. I'm the opposite, but I'm... Really? Yeah. Okay, so after she goes by, we'll go on the wall. Okay. We'll try going down. So, so you can put them on the wall and you bring both hands a little bit to the inside. Yep. Push your left knee down, push your left heel down and bring his front end a little bit in, just a step inside, but try to keep him out on the rail. There you go, yep, there you go. Yep, a little left leg kind of nudge and then relax. So instead of holding it, you keep it a little bit of a fresh aid. Yep, and then turn your toe out a little. There you go. And it's okay. If you have a little bit of overbend at this stage, don't worry about that. You can line him up a little bit more in the neck after. Good. 
and then try again down this wall. So line them up straight? Line, nope, so bend him left, bring, him, bring his shoulders in. What I'm saying is it's okay if for now, for the first few weeks, you have too much bend, that's okay. So you do the same thing you did on the other wall where you bring his front end a track in. Yeah, there you go. There you go, and it's normal he wants to slow down a little bit. You just try to line him up and help him keep a normal step behind. Good job. So it's hard to hold a little bit, but can you feel you were, you were, you were getting him to do that? We'll do one more this way. Good, a little left leg, a little right half halt while you keep him bent. Yep, right half halt. Good, your right leg can turn him in a tiny bit too. There, yep, that's okay, and it's normal. And if you get too far in, just stay straight where you are. Don't feel like you have to go back to the wall. Good, we'll change direction. Good, yep. And it's okay if he wants to come a little too far in. That's good, good job. Is this side easier a little bit? That's okay. So, it, so he went into it well there. And you know, if he's a little too far or a little bit ever, you're just trying to find the feel and, and figure, figure out the pieces a little bit. So don't worry if there's a little overbend or he's just a little bit farther in with his front end. Good, and try again down this wall. A little left half halt there. Yep, a little left half halt again. Relax your right rein a little. Yep, now move him in a little with your left leg a little bit forward. Bring his, yep, there. And then just kind of try to balance him there. Try to keep him lined up like that. Yeah, so there, feel your right leg can be even almost a little lighter. Your right leg, because feel how when he came in, you, want, you were trying to tell him not to come in farther. But by doing that, you actually pushed him back out to the wall. So trying to maintain that place, and I'm going to keep working on these with him when I'm working him. But to maintain that place when you line him up, you know, just, it doesn't have to be a long stretch. But try to, try to get five or six steps or something, and then deliberately put him back straighter instead of feeling like he falls back over. Okay. That's okay. You did, you did it though. It, in the beginning when you're sorting it out, it's a lot. Let's go back to his trot work. So this is the introduction of, of what the shoulder in is. <laughs> exactly. Good. Circle down there. And then catch the left shoulder a little bit. There you go. So it, you soften your right rein a little because feel he's so willing to bend. He almost bends more than you're actually asking him to do, right? So you're not asking for that much bend. He's saying, I'll give you so much. But then he's putting his belly out to the left a little bit. So it's a little, it's a little bit of a way for him to not quite line up. So instead, you float that right rein just a little bit back to him and push his belly in on the outside so that he has to line up and trot through the outside of his body a little bit more. And you, you, seek, you want him to kind of seek your right rein. There you go. Instead of over bending like he was doing. Good. Little left half halt. Yeah. There. And then support that. That was a really good half halt. Feeling balanced back. Yeah. And then you just keep your arms that little bit elastic and close your ankles so you support that slower step. Good. There. Yeah. And that was a good little balancing half fault, whether you meant to or not. I think you caught the shoulder maybe, but he balanced really nicely again. And then you close your ankles and you support that. And then there where he wants to get just a little bit deep, your hands, yes, your hands just that little towards his ears. 
And then you, you play around with the feel of how to still keep his neck low. He doesn't have to come up when you do that, but just that he stops that extra pressure of bearing down against you. Good. Yep, and then hands, yeah, slightly to his ears and push your leg a little there. Good. All right. How about a canter transition? When, when, we, when you feel good about the space. Yeah. And just try to keep the same trot into the canter. Don't feel like you have to fuss with it because it's a nice trot. There, and then relax your body. Don't try too hard. There you go. Just still shoulders, flex a teeny bit to the right, but as you do that, just wrap your calf around him a little bit on the left. So it does, you don't need your spur, but you just need a little bit of surrounding outside leg. Good, and then soften your right rein a little and feel the left a little, just like in the trot when he wanted to overbend, straighten him out just a little. Good, turn him in off your left leg, relax your body, reach down in your legs, there you go. And then balance back to trot. Soften your arms in the downward transition. You use your fingers. There you go. There you go. I think you were thinking you were going to have to be stronger than that to come back down, but you feel how you soften your arms and you can half halt. There you go. Was he, did he feel like he was really trying to fall out, like spin out, or did he feel pretty good on your outside aids? That's okay. Okay, so it was. It obviously wasn't terrible, but it didn't feel like super strong because you would notice that, I think. No, I feel like more of he wants to. He wants to transition down. Yeah. Mess around with the outside. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. No, you're right. Because when you go to balance him to try to get the shoulder in and try to line him up, yeah, it makes sense that instead of actually taking that change of balance, he's going to want to break. Um, Yes, so the hard, yeah, the hard part there is you almost, you have to keep thinking to relax down into it, sit into it a little bit, and, and put your leg on. So all of those corrections you go to make, to balance, to half haul, any of that, catch the shoulder, you have to think, my leg is here, and I make that correction. My leg is here, and I make that correction. Um, because you almost have to go leg a little first as you do it, because you're right. Otherwise, it's like if you miss the timing, he's going to break, or it's going to throw your balance off. Good. Let's try the right one more time. And just relax in your transition because it was, it was nice. It was pretty clean and prompt. Um, it was obedient, but just stay a little relaxed so you don't feel like you work quite so hard through it. The bend is better here. It's not so much. There you go. And then soften your arms and gently close your ankles. Good, little outside half halt with your leg. There you go. Good. Relax your back. Allow just a tiny bit with your hands. There you go, that's okay. And then left half halt, turn him off your left leg a little bit. There, yeah, 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 good job. And soften your right rein. You can make the correction and then immediately soften. There you go. Good. And see if you can ride him around that turn a little earlier here. So he doesn't feel how he wants to get really deep there. And that's what's getting you in a little bit of trouble at that end. So turn earlier through there once. Left half halt, turn early. Left half halt, turn early. Yeah, that's okay. And his tail was going up, so it was making it harder. He's thinking about pooping maybe. It's okay. I just want to get you through that corner one more time. I don't want to drill the canner, but feel how he was pretty determined. He was going to go deep there. And so turn early, cut that end off a little. Yeah, left half halt, soften your right rein when you half halt. There you go. And now transition down your transition. Relax your back, relax your arm, slow your body. There you go. So you don't have to be so strong. Good. Here you go. Ride the trot a little forward. Good. Good. And you just gently push your hands towards his ears as you send him a little bigger. Good. There. And then you want to give him a breather here before we could do the left, okay. you think? Okay. Good job. That, that last time through there was much different. Feel how he was pretty determined, like he was going to go deep there, but then you lo you'd lose him through like that whole stretch, and then, you know, he kicked dirt up over there, and another horse might kind of go and spook or <laughs> with something like that, but he was pretty honest. Oh, that was a spooking. Okay, it wasn't bad. I, I thought it was, I was like, it's like borderline, but not like, not like some horses. It takes too much energy for him to really spook. <laughs> 
<laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but you were, you were like, nope, we're not gonna overbend through here. You're not gonna drag me out there. And then that was quite balanced. Like it might not have felt like it was easy to achieve, but that was very different. And so if you were continuing to practice that, it would get easier and easier. But just noticing, you know what I mean? Just noticing those things like, oh, I didn't actually try to ride him over there. He took me there. And when I try to do something different, he's pretty determined. So that's something you're like, okay, we need to focus on this thing, okay. like in your rides. Because you want to be able to ride on the wall and you want to be able to ride deep in corners, but are you riding him there? Or is he just sort of doing those things? Yes. Otherwise, he gets not he, but any horse will get stuck in the corner. At that yeah. Point, and then they have to over them and get yeah. out of it. So. I have so many people, you know, in their circles, not quite touching. He, we've done this for a long time. Not quite touch the wall. You know, you can spiral in, you can spiral out, but don't touch the wall. You know, obviously, you go in your test and your circle at B and E or whatever, you have to touch, but it's touch and get off. And if you've been if you haven't been practicing being able to stay off the wall, you end up getting on there and, and like riding straight. It's like you get stuck there too long and then it's not a circle because you have straight, <laughs> you know what I mean? Straightaways within it. Um, but like Roxy's one of those, Tom calls it wall dogging, but like they just get there and they're just like, I'm not coming off. And then you can't affect them the way that you want because they're not within the aids. So that's like the same concept as what Laura was talking to you about. One of the main things that stood out to me was ride your corner, ride your corner, it's like don't cut the corner. So I think that's my problem. I have you rain in my brain is yeah. ride the corners, but then I get stuck in the corner. I think there's a point and there is riding them but not having to like override them. Mm -hmm. Yes, but also there's, like Laura was saying, the difference between like training at home and what you're doing in the test arena. Like you have to go through the things that you're going to do in the test arena, but the exercises you do to be able to do what you do in the test arena well, the exercises you do at home are different. You don't achieve that amazing test by just riding those same things over and over. You're using a lot of exercises and different things. And a lot of the time, you know, like when you practice your test, some horses, you can't ride through it over and over and over to practice it and make it better because they just start predicting. So you have to be creative about, you know, the way to practice those things. And there are a lot of, there are just a lot of exercises that you do or things you don't let them do on a regular basis because you get in the test arena and you're like, oh, uh oh, you know, like I can't ride something else. So, or I can't ride this well anymore. You're looking good on camera, oh, by the way. You. <laughs> you like some of my funny faces that I made? Oh, easy. He doesn't like men. Oh, really? Yeah. He's terrified of me. He probably just heard his voice. <laughs> it's okay. We're working on it. <gasps> so I, I get that all the time. Well, good riding. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Every time I'm on a loop, you're sort of laughing. Yes. Of course. He's lost some of his spunk. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And Crystal was like, uh -huh. not having it. <laughs> nice. There. And then, so you have him in a good place there. So 
you just keep thinking, I'm going to plan ahead to keep riding the shoulder around the turn. You just try to, you know, it's a little easier once you've gotten him to that place where he's within your outside aids. Um, and you just kind of have to keep a little check there and, and, and maintain a little bit. It's not as much as when he's out and you're having to think, like, I need to get these shoulders over if he's resistant. You know, sometimes it takes, it takes a moment to transition him over. But then when you have him there, still keep, like, riding that feel. Um, but it's more of a maintenance than a creating sort of a, you know, feel. And then oh, just add a little bit of, yeah, a little push to that walk in preparation to push it back to trot. Your left knee is better, but even to go to trot, don't fe don't anticipate it being hard. Okay. You know, like don't anticipate needing to be strong and don't be strong. Ask him off, you know, a lighter leg, a lighter feel and kind of have the feel, I'm gonna put my leg and go to trot. And it shouldn't even have to be like a really long hold of your leg. If you go to close your leg and he's not going to make a response, you know, tickle him up off your spur or give a little touch of your stick, whatever he's gonna listen to better. There you go. Because you want to actually train him to go off that lighter leg. You shouldn't have to hold, hold, hold your leg or be strong. There you go. So we'll go back and just do it one more time. You, you rode that really well. Just keep a little flexion left. Yep. There you go. He's going to poop while you're walking, so we'll get that out of the way before we go back. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it was better, huh? So just another thing to kind of think about in all of your stuff. Um, check and make sure you're not working harder than what you should. Okay. Here, now just we'll organize your trot a little, bend left, turn him off the outside leg a little bit. Open your chest and shoulders, lift your tummy and your sternum a little bit. There, your left leg's looking better too. It's looking longer and you're not looking like you're a little off to the outside anymore, which is good. So here over bend a little bit and put in a little, put a smaller circle, a little bit smaller circle and turn him off your outside leg just to reestablish. There you go. Keep spiral in a little actually. Keep turning off your right leg and steady the left bend. So where he kind of, he gives a little to it and then he takes it away and he keeps fussing with it. Over bend a little left, soften your outside rein so that you don't work against yourself a little. Yep, turn his nose more left. To the right, I was very much like, don't overbend him. But for the sake of just getting him to soften a little bit here, let's overbend this way. Good. Slow your body down, but keep a little bit his hind end pushing to the bit as you slow down. There you go. And then both hands a little bit to the left and your right half halt towards your left thigh. So it's not backwards and it's not open because that's going to turn his nose out. There you go little close your left fingers there you had some good steps there did you feel where he softened and he was there you go he wasn't tipping his pole or turning his nose out that's getting better yep every time you use your outside half halt steady your inside rein a little bit so however much you need to to not turn his head out off the half halt you know what I mean that's better you go that's better there you go and these things are processes you know just because you d go and do the right thing doesn't mean the horse automatically always does the right thing in that moment sometimes it's a little bit you have to keep asking and just stay you know stay consistent until they come around to it so doesn't mean you were doing the wrong thing doesn't mean he's bad it just he had to sort through that good then you're going to keep that little bit of left flexion as you plan your transition to canter. And same thing, you just keep your knees down, relax your back a little bit as you ask. That's all right. Both hands a little bit to the left, turn them a little bit off your right leg and just think that you let his hind end keep traveling like that but you catch the shoulders and keep bringing them around the turn. Good. Good. Balance this back to trot. 
Not a lot of hand, yeah, good. That was actually quite nice, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so the only thing I'm gonna say, shorten your contact a little bit. So we're gonna do that again, and with a slightly shorter contact, you'll have a little more range of motion to, re to soften your elbows forward, but that was quite a good canter. He wasn't, he wasn't really that up and down feel. He was, <laughs> Frisco, one more Frisco. There you go, push your left knee down. You did a good job staying relaxed in the transition. Same thing as your walk to trot transition. When you go trot to canter, don't expect to have to push him a lot. Relax your back, let your knees stay down, you know, your leg long, and just kind of put your right leg back and ask, but don't feel like you're gonna have to be strong. <laughs> he was more prompt, he was a little sassy, but <laughs> there you go. Yeah, good with your hands, good. good. A little squeeze of the fingers on the outside, just gently towards your left side. There you go, it doesn't even have to be strong, right? It, it, just that little bit brought, him, brought his shoulder around. Now, just relax your back, sit straight down into him. You don't have to lean back more, you just, <laughs> I think you responded to the way you changed your seat. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so this time, good job. Um, this time when you do it, just kind of support a little off your ankle when you change your seat like that. Yep, yep, turn a little early off your outside aids, a little outside half halt, and then soften, and then, and then let his neck down a little bit. A little touch your ankle. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he's probably getting tired here too. I think it's, he's honestly getting that little tired. Good with your hands, good with your contact. Good, but that canter's go that canter was going quite well. Good boy. Yeah, it feels a lot better this way. Yeah, yeah, and we've seen that the the right's been a little bit harder. I found the same thing the other day, but it got better. But I think we are making him a little tired here. <laughs> that was good though. Well, he's left me now. Yes. <laughs> 